Okay. So now it, it is recorded, recording, right? Okay. So uh, for those who has not joined this session today, you can just uh, watch again this video, okay, for chapter two. Uh, we will start with chapter two. So before that, I have a few announcements to make. Okay, first, uh, regarding the lab session, okay, since uh, both uh, this class, SAT1 and SAT2, I will be in charge as your lab instructor. S31 is on Wednesday, but it, it is not this week, right? It is next week, so I think no problem at all. Uh, for S32, so this Friday, this coming Friday, uh, you'll be having a lab session with me, okay? So for both uh, class, uh, both classes, actually, I have already uploaded the materials. Uh, I call it as lab protocols mean that supposedly actually you have to buy the lab manual but since you are still in your home last uh last weeks okay so we give you um the experimental procedures according to the materials and also the uh, uh experimental output meaning that after you do the experiment you have to fill in uh, what's your finding and what's your discussion there Okay, so you can find that uh, um, experiment, experiment 2 for limiting red pen in the announcement at Google Classroom. Okay, so hope please print it out and also uh, the one that I want you to do is um, uh, you have to write jotter. I think I have introduced to you jotter, right? I mean you simplify uh, the procedure there because uh, in that book, the procedure is actually in um, very long sentence, okay? So you need to simplify uh, using the flowchart, okay? And if you think that you can draw, for example, uh, the simple basic glassware, uh, beaker, conical flash, uh, so we have to draw, okay? So that one is for lab session. And the uh, time, uh, it's 8 to... Uh, 9.50 for both classes, right? Okay, but uh, for this, uh, during this pandemic uh, uh, issue, okay, so you have to be divided into two groups where uh, half uh, of the students will be having the lab uh, on the first hour, which is from 8 to 9, and then another half uh, is 9 to 10, for example. Okay, so for that um, division of groups, I will explain uh, because I haven't um, divided yet, but that one is according to the uh, your alphabetical order list. So so that uh, for those yang dah tahu lah, nama dia memang one ke apa-apa lah, -apa, dia mesti session kedua. Okay, uh, I will give uh, the list um, letters by Thursday lah for S32 eh. Okay. Sebab <coughs> saya kena sentiasa get the updated list. Walaupun saya dah ada list but ada yang dah keluar, ada yang tak ada kan. So and ada yang uh, dari Sarawak. Okay. So I need to get that one. Ada yang tak dapat masuk. Okay. So uh, itu paling latest by uh, this uh, Thursday. That one is for S32 and then S31 nanti next week lah. Okay, and then for lab manual, okay, nanti later uh, rasa uh, buku dah ada but uh, maybe start next week lah kot. Uh, or I'm not sure whether this week. Uh, maybe you can prepare 10 ringgit for lab manual and this one I think I prefer the class wrap to uh, apa? seorang je lah wakil kumpul that uh, apa, money for the lab manuals. Okay. And then, okay, regarding the tutorial, our tutorial session is uh, tomorrow, uh, 3 to 3.50 for S31 and 4 to 4.50 for S32. Okay, so this time around, I would like to change a little bit. Uh, I mean, using the uh, different platform, which is using the U Future. Okay, I have posted yesterday uh, to your groups. Okay, so this time around, uh, no need to having uh, the Google meeting. 
Okay. So, uh, what I want you to do is, uh, in the year future I discuss, uh, I have selected a few uh, students. So, you need to submit your answers according to the question number given in the topics a discussion that I have posted. So, you just add post, add post lah. Okay. And then, apa yang saya nak buat, okay. Uh, hopefully, for those selected students uh, submitted, they are, uh, will submit their um, uh, answers beforehand. I mean, uh, earlier before your class uh, start. Okay. So, that others need to comment and anything lah you nak comment ke you nak uh, let's say you kata nak tanya soalan ke i will be around on that particular time okay saya akan monitor lah i will be monitor all uh, the discussion there okay so uh, dia lebih free lah kalau you rasa okay then you just say that okay the answers is uh, similar with me okay or something like that lah okay Saya tak nak you comment macam, okay, uh, your handwriting is very nice. Uh, ada group saya semalam. So, bukan nak you comment handwriting eh. Saya nak you comment the content itself. Okay. So, that one is for tutorial. Kita tengoklah macam mana eh. Kita, uh, we have to try and error the platform that is uh, more suitable to you. Because if you are using uh, only the Google Meet, I know sebenarnya untuk saya, uh, that one is more convenient. I mean, uh, lebih berkesan. Uh, for the uh, explaining but I think because some of you might have problem with the internet connection and so on okay so I have to um, take note on that part also okay but I don't know maybe if you are later in um, college hopefully all the internet's connection are not the issue anymore okay so Another thing is regarding the test, eh, sorry, quiz, quiz one. Okay, so many issues actually before this. I know, um, yelah, kebetulan the quiz held uh, last week where uh, at the very end of the last week is actually Hari Raya, right? Okay, so actually semalam actually ada satu isu yang sangat besar where um, uh, the... I don't know, know whether it's from my class or from other classes. So, ada parents yang uh, complain that um, their son or daughter having meet, uh, quiz one um, malam raya. Okay, so the uh, email itself is very, I think, um, bila kita baca tu rasa as a sedih lah, okay. So actually, I, I do not know whether it's come from you or others. Tapi saya nak cakap in general lah. Actually, we, uh, the quiz itself memang dah set for last week. You you have already known, right? Uh, saya dah beritahu banyak kali quiz minggu ketiga. And that Thursday is actually, kenapa saya pilih Thursday is because of, I think uh, you need more time because kalau saya ambil Isnin sampai Rabu, you have packed class. Okay, so tak nak lah ganggu masa you punya class. So that's why I think, okay, Thursday maybe you are a bit more free and have more time. Okay, that's why I open from a uh, very late night of uh, Wednesday until late night of Thursday. Saya bagi masa kan satu hari. But then I, I do not know lah, maybe um, I, I faham lah kalau ada kes yang maybe dia kata nak balik kampung lah ataupun malam raya kan. Maybe nak bertakbir raya ke apa saya tak sure lah. Tapi uh, as for me, kalau student saya lah, for those yang jawab malam tu, I assume that you are the one that choose that time because I already open uh, earlier. Okay. So itu untuk that case lah. So that's why last uh, yesterday, all of us, the lecturers are very sad. Okay. Uh, kita rasa macam sedih lah bila ada isu macam ni. Okay. So meaning that I think later uh, you have to be careful lah. Maybe your quiz maybe only on weekdays even though you are very packed with other class so kita tak boleh dah usik you punya free time. Okay. Saya ingat saya akan guna free time so that at least you ada masa untuk study ke apa kan. Okay. So regarding the quiz also. Okay. It's actually I want to sekarang saya nak ask uh, in front lah. Actually, I have um, 
survey ni, saya kan dah tanya survey kan. So most of you, kejap eh, saya buka saya punya survey ni. The response on the, do you think we should perform another quiz one and discard the previous quiz? Uh, 68% ni saya ambil total daripada empat kelas eh, yang saya pegang. Um, response that I'm okay with either remain with the previous quiz one or having another quiz. Okay. Maksudnya nak buat quiz lagi satu boleh, tak buat pun tak apa. Okay. And then. Yeah. Okay. Did you manage to answer quiz one within the time limit given? 64.6% response yes of course. Meaning that I think masa yang saya bagi is okay. Okay sebenarnya kalau you jawab dekat kelas saya bagi 15 minit sahaja. Okay so that's why saya extra kan saya double that time uh, menjadikan dia 35 minit. So that that one is including the uh, all the internet connection lah. Okay but still have uh, many problems. And then maybe Quiz one kot. Ada yang jawab panik lah sebab tiba eh soalan salah. <laughs> Ada juga yang nak betulkan saya soalan salah. Soalan tu betul eh. Soalan tu tak salah. Kalau you rasa salah maknanya you, you tak faham soalan. Okay. So um, so how eh I think uh, do you need more quiz? Uh, or else saya punya plan is when I uh, see your response I will do another quiz one. This is my plan. Okay, saya nak tanya juga you all. I will do another quiz one but um, for those yang rasa uh, they are very confident with quiz, previous quiz one. Okay, I will get uh, that one lah. You boleh tak, ya, tak nak jawab pun for this another quiz one. And of course uh, the questions are different lah. So saya tak boleh buka soalan yang sama. Uh, so that's why I need more time to create more exercise, to create more question. Okay, so macam mana? Perlu ke? And of course the time Saya tak tahulah Saya kena buat uh, during Office hour ke? 8 sampai 5 sahaja Or can you do during the weekend or night? Ha, kan sekejap lagi saya dapat surat layang lagi kan daripada parents Saya perlukan your response right now we can also can. How about others? Yes. Boleh we can. We can pun okay. Okay. Sekarang ni saya, kita takut lah kan. Kan sekejap lagi kita buat weekend ke, buat malam ke. Uh, kan sekejap lagi ada yang mengadu kat parents. Nama sekarang tak boleh tak main-main eh. Uh, parents but you know what? Uh, that surat layang tu bukannya sampai ke lecturer eh. Dia sampai ke orang atas. Terus. So <laughs> that's why yang kita semua uh, have to be careful lah. Weekend boleh. Okay saya prefer weekend. Maybe that weekend, uh, I think I, I, of course lah, uh, maybe saya takkan buka macam hari tu satu hari saja. Maybe I need to open all the weekends so that you can find your ample time to answer the quiz, right? Okay? Saya prefer lah sebenarnya bila you free, you rasa you, bila you free nak jawab. Maybe, yelah, saya pun faham lah. Mungkin parents tu marah sebab uh, kebetulan kan malam raya. Ada yang jawab malam raya. Lepas tu parents tengok, buat apa tu jawab kuis? Kuis apa kuis kami sendiri? Hmm. Okay. So, uh, saya plan macam ni lah. Bad quiz. Actually, uh, you please uh, do not disseminate to others eh. Uh, sebenarnya kalau kuis dah dah jalan, dah jalan lah. Uh, tapi sebab saya fikir, uh, biasalah banyak hiccups kan for the first one, first time. Uh, saya buat untuk quiz one je lah eh. Uh, maybe but oh, oh, of course uh, extra work for me uh, nak prepare soalan, nak menanda lagi sekali okay even yang dulu pun saya tak sempat tanda lagi um, maybe saya akan buat another quiz and tengoklah 
uh, I will compare which one is better for you. So I will take that one. Okay. Okay. So kita dah buang masa kat sini eh. Okay. So <coughs> so that uh, so far lah the information uh, for you as for now. Now uh, we will move to the lecture. Okay. So today um, uh, we'll be starting with uh, topic two. Okay. I know that I asked you to submit checkpoint for topic one right. The deadline is on this Friday Sebab saya, itu pun salah saya lah Sebab saya terlambat <coughs> open that session So Tak apa, you try dulu Saya sempat, kita if uh, we have more time in the lecture Saya akan discuss uh, that part uh, Discussion for the checkpoint Sebab bagus juga untuk you all punya uh, letter test ke apalah and if we do not have time for the Google Meet session, saya akan bagi the uh, answers lah so you can check. Okay, but you uh, please submit. If I, I have time, I will go through. So I can think of, uh, on how uh, your working solution. Sometimes you rasa you betul tapi bila saya tengok, okay, this working solution tak boleh diterima. So, salah. So, tu yang saya nak you hantar eh, for that checkpoint. <coughs> okay, so... Uh, uh, have you watched chapter 2? Yes. How do you find chapter 2? <laughs> Complicated. Yes. Kelas malam pun semua. Macam ni lah. Dah lah kelas pukul 4 sampai 6. <coughs> okay. Sekejap eh. Okay, saya dah buka kan? Okay. So, uh, okay again, of course, saya kena tanya. Sekejap lagi ada yang complain. Um, uh, do you need more time to watch the pre-recorded video first? Or we can just go through together uh, for this slide? Go through. Go through. Okay. So. Sekejap eh. <coughs> Okay. Nampak eh? Full eh? Nampak full eh? Okay. So, uh, this topic two, okay, the title is Electronic Structure of Atom, Predictable and Predicity. So, basically, this topic is all about predictable. Okay, that's why previously uh, students have asked me, uh, Miss, um, uh, do they provide predictable during the test or exam? Uh, previous years, yes, they provide. Okay, but, um, and then we find that actually when we provide a uh, predictable, meaning that we provide answers, especially for this topic. Okay, that's why after this, we do not provide, actually dah a few years lah, uh, kita, kita buat macam ni, we do not provide the predictable, but we provide the list of uh, atom that common use, okay, with the uh, mass number and also atomic number. At least lah, yang tu saja. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so, these are the content. Okay. We only have five. So, because we have only five content, actually, uh, this we uh, actually covered uh, chapter, uh, sorry, uh, two, only two weeks. Okay. This week and also next week. Okay, first we go to uh, 2.1, Bohr's model of hydrogen atom. Okay, so I think uh, you dah familiar kan, Bohr's model. So, uh, actually before uh, Bohr's model, so many models previous on the atom. Okay, uh, for example, Thomson, Rutherford and many more lah. Okay, but itu yang awal-awal keluar. And then, bila Bohr's uh, come out dengan this uh, model, using the hydrogen atom. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, for this uh, learning objectives, okay, you should be able to state the postulate the Bohr's atomic model. So, again, postulate is the assumption. Okay. So, state the weaknesses in Bohr's atomic model. Although uh, uh, this Bohr's model uh, have been widely known, but it also have weakness. Okay. So, for the Bohr's model, basically, um, the theory is based on electrons 
Okay, sorry, uh, this topic is a bit dry, so I hope uh, you can bear with me. And and this topic is actually uh, a very new topic to you. Yang awal-awal ni maybe tak adalah new sangat, tapi but later is very new. So I hope you can pay attention lah. Okay, on what I'm explaining. And if I uh, laju sangat ke atau you tak faham, you can just interrupt me. But please do not uh, use the chat box because I memang tak nampak. My screen now is only the PowerPoint slide. Okay, you can just uh, unmute your microphone lah. Okay, so the boss model, uh, she, uh, he proposed uh, that theory dia, okay, electrons revolve around nucleus. Assume that like macam uh, earth, uh, revolve around uh, sun or moon, uh, apa? Apa? Uh, moon uh, evolve around uh, sun also. For example, macam tu lah. Dia assume dia bergerak mengelilingi uh, nucleus, eh, that electrons. So, uh, this bars explain on the, you know, okay, the structure of atom changes when it undergoes energy transition. They explain that that atom berubah, okay, bila dia melalui perubahan uh, tenaga, energy transition. So, this major idea is actually energy of the atom was quantized. So, quantized here mean definite amount. Definite is like you said, definitely, very uh, surely, okay. Dia, kita tahu dia ada specific, uh, specific amount of energy. Okay, so this amount of energy is related to its electron position. Maksudnya kalau energy dia berada dekat energy level yang berbeza, uh, dekat tempat yang berbeza, energy dia berbeza. Okay. Okay, so uh, basically uh, si uh, Bors ni, okay, dia buat eksperimen, basically um, dia pass through this, uh, dia guna electric current lah, this glass tube. Contain, sebab dia kaji on hydrogen, right? So, dia guna hydrogen gas. So, dia will emit uh, a few colors here. Okay, violet, blue, violet, blue, green and red. Ni eksperimen je lah. Okay. So, mana yang saya rasa tak berapa ni yang you boleh baca sendiri. Actually, uh, all of this history you can just google. You akan jumpa banyak information on this. Okay. So, electron absorb energy in the form of photons. So, photons is actually, um, um, macam light, light is photons. Okay. So, nama uh, energy in electron tu, we call it as photons. Okay. To get excited, hmm, excited lah kan. Uh, so, here excited means daripada lower level, dia pergi naik pada higher level to, we call it as uh, excited state. That lower level, uh, normally we call it as ground state. Okay, daripada bawah dia naik ke atas. Okay, so dia nak naik, actually it will absorb dulu energy. Okay, then, then bila dia naik, the excited electron will be in less level position. Dia dah naik, dia ke atas, dia excited kan? Ha. So dia is very unstable so that they quickly emit photon, uh, they release that energy then dia relax, untuk relax balik kan. So, dia turun balik uh, to the stable energy level which is to the ground state. Macam ni lah. First kat sini yang yellow ni. At first dekat ground state, absorb energy, naik ke atas excited state. After this excited state, um, dia unstable so dia turun balik uh, to the, dia sebelum dia turun maknanya dia kena lepaskan lah that energy and turun kepada uh, ground state untuk dapatkan more stable energy. Okay. So, <coughs> the postulates from the Bohr's model is actually uh, he explained on the energy level lah tadi. The hydrogen atom has only certain energy level. So, the higher the energy level, the further the orbit from the nucleus. Maksudnya dia Lagi tinggi energy level, lagi jauh from nucleus. So actually this one is, uh, I think, uh, what you have uh, studied during your secondary school is you you learn that we have nucleus, right? And then you buat bulat macam ni kan? Lepas tu you letak elektron. Okay, shell yang pertama. First shell, second shell, third shell. So the one that... <coughs> Very close to nucleus, you letak electron for example. 
So this one we call it as, as uh, energy level yang paling dekat lah. So you pergi pergi keluar. Uh, so this is uh, you go to higher energy level for example. So the higher the energy level, the further the orbit from the nucleus lah. Makin jauh. Kalau kat sini makin jauh lah. Jarak dia kan. Uh, so this is actually uh, postulate from Bohr model. Okay, so uh, this one is actually the one that I explained previously. Okay, saya explain balik dalam bentuk macam ni lah. Tadi saya explain yang ni, bentuk garis-garis tu -garis kan. So basically actually the real one is kita assume macam ni kan. Boss model dia ada macam orbit dia. So where we have this nucleus, for example we have this electron. Okay, ni kita panggil energy level lah. So lagi banyak. Uh, ni kita panggil shell kan. Lagi banyak bulatan tu, lagi banyak lah energy level you. Okay. So, at the first orbit, this one, dia punya, we call it as, uh, it has the lowest energy level. We call it as ground state. Okay. So, when this electron absorb energy, okay, it will go to excited state. Maksudnya dia akan lompat ke energy level yang keluar. Yang paling at lebih atas lah. So, dia pergi pada excited state. Okay, jumps to a higher energy level. And then at this excited state, mana tadi? Tadilah dia asalnya kat atas kan. It's unstable. So, that's why it will emit or release energy. So, dia akan patah balik kepada ground state. Return to ground state. Okay. So, however, Okay, so this Bohr atomics model have a uh, weakness lah. Of course, according to that theory, uh, Bohr tadi kan dia bergerak ikut orbit. Orbit saja, maksudnya bulat. Okay, but actually um, sebenarnya it's not like that. Okay, so the weakness is uh, this Bohr atomic model could only explain the spectrum of hydrogen. Sebab memang dia study untuk hydrogen kan. So yang related dengan hydrogen is the either ion that contain only one electron. So how about others? Maksudnya you have many atoms, right? Atoms yang ada, uh, for example, aluminium. You have 13 electrons. So how to explain for 13 electrons? Dia boleh explain satu saja. Maknanya lagi 12 macam mana dia nak explain? Okay? So itu adalah weakness for Bohr's atomic model. And it could not predict lah the energy level and spectra of most, uh, that having more than one electron. Okay, but <coughs> and then later we uh, come up with modern quantum mechanics. Maksudnya uh, model yang baru, okay, but kita tak adalah sampai, hmm, bukan kita lah eh. This uh, modern quantum mechanics do not totally reject the Bohr's model. Okay, it retains the Bohr's concept where uh, involving the energy states or energy level. Yang tadi pasal energy tu, Uh, they maintain the concept but uh, totally reject the circular orbits. Yang ni. Yang bergerak setempat saja tu is um, not like that. Ya macam saya cakap meng macam mengelilingi bulan tu kan. Okay. That one is rejected because it's actually the electrons um, move around using uh, by having the wave according to the wave. Maksudnya dia akan bergerak secara Macam ni. Dia bukannya bulat. Exactly macam tu eh. Okay. So <coughs> that's why uh, kita kenalkan dalam uh, this topic with Bohr's model. Padahal sebelum tu ada lagi Thomson, Rutherford tapi tu lagilah kita reject lah. Okay. You kalau you berminat you boleh baca sendiri lah eh. You can google that one. <coughs> okay. So for this checkpoint, state the postulate of Bohr's model atom. So you boleh follow lah ikut slide yang tadi eh. So you refer balik lah eh. Okay, saya go through ni laju lah eh. <coughs> okay, now we move to quantum mechanic model. Where uh, this one is the one that we will use uh, later after this. Where uh, ni dah start you akan belajar a very new, new things lah. Uh, involving the electrons. <coughs> and so for this learning objective, okay, you should be able to state the Broglie's postulate. Okay, ni nama orang juga ni. 
and Hessenberg's uncertainty principle to explain the properties of electron and then state all of four quantum numbers. <coughs> okay, so previously from Bohr, okay, tadi kan kita cakap um, uh, from Bohr's model, okay, uh, they did not uh, totally rejected Bohr's model. Okay, from that Bohr's model, they come up with another um, experiment and idea, okay, and the conclusion, okay, so that's why they panggil quantum mechanic model, dia bukan refer to only one name, okay, they refer to, they combine all the scientists' uh, experimental outcome, they combine together to get the properties of electrons. Okay, the first we start with de Broglie's postulate, dia yang keluar dulu lah, 1924. Okay, so it mentioned that the electrons have dual properties where electron uh, actually uh, can behave as particle and also can behave as wave. Sebab tu dalam quantum mechanics tadi, dia, tak, dia, dia kata dia bergerak uh, actually not uh, in an orbit. Dia akan bentuk wave, pergerakan dia. Okay, because of uh, his postulate. Uh, electrons have dual properties and then a year after that uh, this Hessenberg uh, came out that uh, they have uh, uncertainty principle where it's mentioned that it is impossible to know exactly both momentum and position of moving particle at the same instant time. Yelah, very susah. Adalah, you nak you nak study very tiny electron and then you, you want to, to study on momentum and position, then that uh, electron is actually moving around. Dia tak stop kan, dia bergerak. So it's very impossible to know the exact location. Okay, so <coughs> maksudnya bukan location saja to know the exact momentum and location. Okay, so that's why after a year after that, Schrodinger came out with uh, the equation where from the, that equation to get the position or coordinate of the electrons in the atom. Okay, so benda ni we combine together then we come up with quantum, they come up with quantum mechanical, mechanical model. <coughs> so, uh, so the properties of electron, uh, same as like I have mentioned previously, okay, have dual nature, particle like and wave like. Dia macam particle, is particle lah and then but dia boleh bergerak behave as wave also. Okay. <coughs> so tadi eh, photon tu apa kan? Uh, electrons come in packets or bundles. Itu yang kita maksudkan uh, what is the photons actually. Okay. So for this checkpoint, again, because uh, this is all the theory kan. State the de Broglie's hypothesis. So de Broglie's ni tadi dia mention about dual properties, right? So, can be have as particles and also wave. Uh, to the punya keyword lah. Okay. So, okay. Now, um, uh, tadi kan saya cakap uh, the last year for the uh, combination of the quantum mechanical model is from Schrodinger. Okay. So, actually, uh, the generate equation, right? To get the... Uh, to find the coordinate of the electrons, okay. They describe how the electrons are distributed in space. Macam mana distribution of that electrons. Okay, it's actually not really uh, get the exact location of the electrons since I mentioned previously, sangat susah. Uh, kita tak nampak, benda yang tak nampak sangat. And then but that electrons actually bergerak kan. But from Schrodinger equation, dia dapat can have the high probability lah, more than 90% to find the electrons, okay? By this equation, not need to uh, memorize this one. Actually, this is the very simplified equation. Kalau you search Schrodinger equation, it's very complex. Even saya pun saya tak, saya tak tahu. Kalau saya belajar uh, <coughs> quantum physics, uh, ni physics sebenarnya eh. Uh, specific in this, ialah kena belajar. But this one, I just had mentioned lah in uh, overview eh. So this, uh, <coughs> we call it as a one electron wave function. Sebab nak relatekan dengan wave kan. Eh? Call as orbital. Remember? Orbital is not orbit. Orbit tadi 
yang bulat tu kan mengelilingi nucleus bors model eh ini orbital orbital meaning that the space mana ya asal ada kan orbital is a region in space macam tempat uh, dia satu region lah dia bukan macam specific location uh, we assume uh, you have you have nucleus uh, at the center so macam kat luar ni ah uh, ini we call it as orbital lah <coughs> region in space where we uh, we can find that electron there okay <coughs> okay so because of that from that all of the theories actually we can conclude that actually elect electrons in the atom are not located at the same distance from nucleus <coughs> semua elektron tu okay meaning that uh, what you have learned uh, using a Bohr theory kan you buat macam ni kan this is nucleus <coughs> okay ini shell yang pertama you add uh, elektron macam ni kan two electrons meaning that we assume kalau sepatutnya size dia sama lah eh, jarak kat sini macam sama ke apa kan so actually not ataupun mungkin dua tak apa nampak biasalah kat sini lapan kan betul tak dulu you belajar macam ni saya lupa dah sebenarnya sebab dah, dah tinggal benda ni eh. kan so maksudnya you see macam okey lapan lapan ni dia bergerak uh, ikut orbit saja macam ni okay where actually it's not like that okay and actually dan dia bukan macam ni lah kedudukan dia okay <coughs> so this quantum mechanical model describe the energy level of the electron in the orbital so dia macam dalam ni actually sebenarnya ada adalah tempat dia ob, dalam bentuk orbital mungkin kita nampak dia macam bulat juga actually but dia bukanlah bergerak uh, really follow the orbit okay macam tadi awal-awal saya tunjuk lah dia dalam bentuk wave so to get the specified space okay the location uh, this model came up with that each each electron eh, setiap electron is characterized with a set of quantum numbers where we have n l m l m s <coughs> ada empat ni you kena tahu this empat itu menentukan dia punya electron punya kedudukan lah so dia assume macam we we know that uh, every each of you each of us have our identification right uh, our thumbprint kan setiap orang tak sama even you adik beradik ke apa pun takkan sama so same goes to this electron each of electron setiap electron maksudnya even hydrogen ada satu saja electron electron dia satu je lah kalau uh, aluminium ada 13 electrons so all the 13 electron have very different set of quantum numbers so dia bezakan dengan this n l m l m s okay clear ke so far clear <coughs> okay so that's why okay this is uh, this this slide is not in your Uh, slide tapi sebenarnya sama je cuma saya nak sebelum kita pergi uh, in details ex nak explain what is actually n l m l m s eh so principal quantum number for n actually n will determine the size of orbital okay l angular momentum sometimes ada certain book we call it as azimuthal Cata saya tak sure mana datang nama ni lah. Okay, ada certain book uh, gives this name. Determine the shape okay, of the orbital. ML, magnetic momentum quantum number. Determine the orientation. And then uh, ML is very important lah. Okay, so this quantum number will be used to describe atomic orbital and to label electron. Dia dia macam setiap elektron ada rumah dia. Ha, so rumah tu adalah ML. So MS, the spin quantum number, describe the spin of specific electron. Okay. Now, we start with N first. N eh. Tadi kita tahu we have N, L, ML, MS. Now, kita pergi satu-satu. <coughs> Basically, to have the specific 
set of quantum number memang kita start ikut turutan. Kita memang akan tulis ikut turutan. You nak tengok pun you akan tengok ikut turutan. We will start with n first. So what is n? Principle tadi kan? Principle quantum number. Principle quantum number is actually known as shell. Ah, uh, Paling basic shell lah maksud dia. What is shell? We know that this is nucleus, okay. Yang you bulatkan ni, ah ini adalah shell lah ni. The first shell. And then you have second. Second shell. You have third. Third shell. This is N. Meaning that the first shell is N equals to 1. Second is N equals to 2. N equals to 3 and so on lah. Sampai dia ada berapa shell yang dia ada. Okay, so this shell determine the distance of electron from nucleus. Betul lah kan? Kalau you have electron at n equals to 3, of course, it's further or far away as you compare to n equals to 1. Okay, and this shell also is identified by letters K, L, M, N, O. Don't ask me why you start with K, I also do not know. Okay. But a uh, letter designation must be, must be in capital letters. Eh? So, kalau n equals 1 is also put as K, capital letter. 2, L and so on lah. Dia akan bersambung. Maksudnya kalau you ada 6, uh, O, P dan seterusnya lah. Okay. And is related, correlated to the orbital size. Okay, macam saya cakap tadi lah. If n you lagi, be, lagi besar, of course, the size of orbital is increases sebab jarak pun makin jauh, kan? Allah, oh, padam pula. Okay, so you faham kan? Maksudnya lagi besar n tu, jarak dia makin jauh. So, of course, size makin besar. Okay? Yes, yes ada yang nak tanya ke? Uh, yang n tu boleh anggap ke dia sebagai number of shell? Yes, shell, betul. Uh, sebab tadi kan saya cakap N tu shell kan So maksudnya N equals to 1 Is you You ada nucleus You ada ni je Bila N equals to 2 Maknanya you jangan terus kata Dia dekat 2 je Maksudnya dia ada juga satu You will start with 1 right N equals to 2 dekat sini Ah, uh, The number of shell lah Okay so jadi N equals to 2 Ni N equals to 1 Yeah, jom. Yes. Kalau dia tanya number, number of shells occupied tu kira ni sama lah dengan prinsip quantum number ni. Uh, yes, betul. Bila dia mention about shell, it is N. The prinsip quantum number. Okay. Tak apa, nanti ada after this rasanya ada checkpoint kita boleh try tengok lah. Nak tengok whether you faham ke tak faham kan. Okay. So, ah uh, ni contohlah. Let's say if you have n equals to 1, nampak tak? Maksudnya tengah yang the white color is nucleus. So you have only one um, apa shell n equals to 1. If you have n equals to 2, you tak boleh nak lari yang actually you also have n equals to 1. Okay, dekat tengah tu. So n equals to 2, of course it's bigger than n equals to 1. When you have n equals to 3, of course it's bigger than n equals to 2. Okay, so n equals to 3 ni yang kat paling luar ni. Tapi dalam masa sama kat dalam tu ada n equals to 2. Yang dalam lagi ada n equals to 1. Okay, so basically it referring to uh, macam kawan cakap lah, shell eh. Okay, clear eh untuk n? Okay, so just now we I mentioned about n. Now it is L. Okay, ikut turutan kan. There's L eh. So what is L? Angular. Dalam arti kata lain, this is subshell. Tadi shell kan? N is shell. Now L is subshell. Dalam shell ada subshell. Okay. So this angular momentum determine the shape of orbital. Dia menentukan bentuk orbitals. Okay. So this orbital um, uh, with the same value of N may have different shape. Okay. Sedang tengok macam ni lah. Value of L, first before you go to this table, is actually from 0 to N minus 1. Meaning that from 0 to N minus 1. Meaning that kat sini for example you have N equals to 1. 
So your L is equals to zero. Satu tolak satu kosong. So kosong lah juga kan. Okay tak nampak sangat kot. Kalau N equals to two. Your L is equals to. Mesti start from zero. And N minus one. One. Okay. So N equals to three for example. L U. Zero. One. Two. Okay. Faham eh? N equals to four. Ah, uh, N equals to four. Your L is zero, one, two, ha. three. Okay. Ah, itu maksud dia. So, this uh, number, this value L ni, is actually tadi dia cakap referring to shape of orbital. Shape tu shape apa? Ah, uh, Shape tu pula kita um, specifickan kepada uh, huruf. Shape apa eh? Shape S. P, D, F. Okay. Nanti memanglah later you akan belajar. What is the kind of shape yang you kena tahu? Cuma kita namakan that shape as S. Kalau dia zero, dia S. Kalau dia one, dia P. Kalau dia two, dia D. Kalau dia three, dia F. We stop until F saja. Kenapa? Because in your predictable, kan? Ni predictable you kan? Haa. Ada lagi lantenat, ectenat tu kan? Eh, cuma dia tahu apa dia. Ha, okay. You ada ni blok S P D, kat sini F. Both. Sebab tu dia ada sampai F saja. Later bila you pergi pada break table, that's why kenapa you belajar sampai F sajalah. <coughs> okay. So um Maksudnya dekat group dalam periode table ni, dalam ni bentuk dia semua S. Yang ni bentuk dia D, yang ni P, yang ni F. Ha, macam itulah. So macam mana bentuk S? Bukan bentuk S tu bentuk dia macam ni eh. Ha, bukan. Adalah rupa dia nanti. And why they call it SPDF? Ah, That one also saya pun tak sure. Tapi yang ni kita guna small letter. Okay. So uh, for this case pula. Saya kena padam juga. Okay. The higher the value of L, the higher its energy level. Thus, S is less or lower than P, lower than D, lower than F. Okay. Sebab, yelah, uh, lagi rendah value L tu, maksudnya ini yang paling lowest lah. Okay. So, we know that setiap uh, N akan ada at least S. At least. Sebab N yang paling rendah adalah satu kan. At least L dia kosong. Sebab kalau N awak dua, L awak ada juga kosong. Tapi ada satu. So ini zero ni tadi adalah S right? Is the lowest. This one. Okay. Clear ke? So far? Um. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. So now let's uh, uh, combine. Tadi kan you dah belajar N. This is the principal quantum number. Selepas so, kita stop sampai uh, 4 kan uh, Kita boleh juga uh, keluarkan dia as uh, using the letter kan K, L, M, N, huruf besar And then how about L? L tadi from 0 until N minus 1 <coughs> For N, of course jadi 0 saja. For N equals to 2, 0, 1, N equals to 3, 0, 1, 2, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3 Okay, so tadi kan saya cakap L is actually the subshell <coughs> So we know that 0 is S, 1 is P, uh, 2 is D, 3 is F. Okay. So bila kita put as the subshell, nombor yang kat depan ni is actually referring to the N uh, shell dia. So the subshell dia yang belakang ni 1S. So we know that bila dia 1S maksudnya dia cuma ada kosong saja L dia. Kalau uh, 2S, 2P, 2S, 2P, 2 is actually N dia, kan, shell dia. S and P is actually referring to 0 and 1. So same goes to others lah. 3S, 3P, 3D, meaning that N equals to 3. But when N equals to 3, it have 0, 1, 2. S, P, D. 0, 1, 2, 3, S, P, D, F. Okay, dia macam tu. <coughs> Okay, so far clear ke untuk L? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Ada yang nak tanya? Yang, <coughs> maksudnya, 
Satu tu kan nombor shell tu shell. kan? Mm -hmm. Punya shell number one. So kalau dia satu S, maksudnya dia satu bentuk tu. Satu S. Yes. Bentuk kalau dia kalau satu satu S, maksudnya dia ada bentuk S sahaja. Dekat N equals one. So kalau dia dua, maksudnya shell yang... Dia ada dua bentuk. Bentuk S. Then dia ada... Uh, okay. Ha. So maksudnya dekat... Okay, sekejap saya padam eh. Okay. Ha, bagus juga soalan awak tu. Sebab tadi kita cerita pasal shape kan. L ni untuk shape. So maksudnya dekat N equals to 2, you ada bentuk S dan bentuk P. Dan. Maksudnya ada dua bentuk kat situ. S ada, P ada. Kalau N equals to 3, you ada S, you ada P, you ada D. Bentuk yang berbeza. Okay, kalau ada uh, N equals to 4 ni tadi, ha, you ada empat bentuk yang berbeza. Ha, kita tak pergi lagi ni macam mana nak uh, rupa bentuk tu kan. Tapi you cukup you tahu bilangan bentuk tu ada berapa. Okay. <coughs> so, after you have subshell, N, L, now you nak pergi pada ML. Ha, nak pergi yang ni pula. So, what is ML? It is magnetic. You, you tak boleh uh, belajar ni uh, uh, separately. You kena memang kena relate kan. Okay, first you kena faham N. You tak boleh macam uh, N tak faham lah saya nak faham ML je. Tak boleh. Dia combine together sebab quantum number ni dia datang dengan set. Set dia ada empat. N, L, M, L, M, S. Okay. So that's why you kena faham satu-satu. So uh, ML ni pula untuk apa? This one is to determine the orientation of the orbitals. <coughs> Since you dah tahu, okay. L tu you dah tahu bentuk dia macam mana. Now uh, we can know the orientation. So to to know the orientation that's why they come out dengan Um, sebab you have to imagine lah So benda ni that's why a bit dry Because you tak nampak but you have to imagine That we uh, have uh, dalam bentuk 3D Okay so that's why you have axis X, Y, Z Okay kita tahu selama ni kita buat graph X dengan Y je kan Macam ni je So now you that you you have to remember that you ada lagi satu axis Untuk dapatkan 3D so X, Y, Z lah Okay so <coughs> First kita tengok dulu value dia macam mana. Kalau L tadi from 0 to N minus 1 by ML, negative L to positive L. Okay. That's why dia referring to the L. Okay. Contoh. Ambil yang paling rendah. N equals to 1. So L tadi equals to 0. <coughs> so ML awak. Negative L to positive L. Negative L awak tak ada, neg tak ada nombor pun kosong. So ML you 0 lah. Okay, okay. So tak nampak lagi kan? N equals to 2. Your L is 0, 1. So ML, saya buat kat bawah eh. ML. Ni ada 1 kan? Ah, Kat sini, you kena, you you have to know that you have 2 L, right? You kena pecahkan satu-satu. Where 0, ML is 0. But for 1, ML is Negative 1, 0, positive 1. Ni kan? From negative L to positive L. <coughs> Faham tak? Okay, tak apa. Lagi satu contoh. N equals to 3. Your L is 0, 1, 2. ML. Kena pecah. 0, this one. Negative 1, 0, 1. This one. Negative 2, 0, 1. Eh, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Boleh tak? Faham tak? Hmm. Ah, you kena senaraikan lah eh, L tu. Memang that's why lah. Lagi banyak N, of course lagi banyak L. Lagi banyak N, lagi banyak ML. You tak boleh macam... Uh. Ya, yeah, ah, dia nak tanya. Uh, so, maksudnya kalau... ML ni kita kena pecahkan lah satu yes. nombor tu eh. You have to separate the L. Ha, you, you tak boleh oh. kata dia N2, L dia 0, 1 kan. You tak boleh kata ML, eh tak susah tak boleh. You tak boleh kata dia ni macam ni. Kalau ni memanglah kosong pun ada tapi ni ada tiga je. Sebab nanti kita kena kira bilangan ML tu. Sebab kalau ni ada juga satu kosong. So bilangan ML ada empat total. 3 tambah 1, 4. Kalau you buat ini saja, walaupun kosong, ni pun ada kosong. Ha, tak boleh. Ini maksudnya ada 3 saja. 
Okay so sebab you kena ingat macam tadi kenapa you kena buat satu-satu Sebab tadi kawan you ada tanya maknanya dan contoh dekat n equals to Ada dua lah bentuk kan? Yes ada dua bentuk maksudnya ini spesifik satu satu rumah dia yang ni tadi spesifik dia ada tiga rumah Sebab tadi eh ni okay ni ruang dia besar sikit eh N equals to L equals to zero one kan? Zero ni tadi apa? S kan? Satu ni apa? P. So this zero, you ada zero. This P, you ada negative one, zero, one. So tiga kan? So tiga ni tiga. Kat sini tiga. Yang zero ada satu. Kalau kita tanya how many orbitals? Sebab ML tu kita bila tanya how many orbitals, kita refer pada ML. So total ada empat. Okay that's why you kena pecahkan L tu. Kena buat satu-satu lah. Okay. Clear eh? Ada lagi nak tanya? <coughs> tak ada eh? Okay so saya proceed. So ah kita come out lah dengan sekejap eh. Okay. Ah, ni dah bentuk dia. So kita nak uh, relatekan L shape eh dengan ML. Dia punya orientation tu. Okay. So L equals to zero is actually bentuk S tadi kan. S bentuk dia adalah sphere. Bulat. Bulat je. Okay. Cuma maknanya kalau we know that setiap N ada S. Betul tak? N yang awak equals to 1 ke, N yang awak equals to 4 ke, mesti ada at least S. So bentuk dia bulat. Cuma bulat apa nak beza kan? Uh, lagi besar N, lagi besarlah bulat dia. Kan? Uh, itu nanti later lah kita akan pergi eh. So L equals to 0, dia kan relatekan dengan ML. ML equals to 0 kan? Meaning that This uh, ML nak tengok, dia, dia kata orientation kan. So this one is referring to uh, orbital. Okay. Dia ada satu, maksudnya dia ada satu saja orbital. Okay. Satu kotak. Nanti later you akan masuk elektron dekat dalam ni. Okay. Uh, okay. Mungkin takut tak nampak. Yang tu kan kita tengok pula L equals to 1. L equals to 1 is P. P ni bentuk dia macam dumbbell ataupun two blue tied together. Dia tak tengah-tengah. So P ni tadi. Okay. P yang ni kan. This is P. Yang ni S. Okay untuk yang ni ML dia. Negative one. Zero. One. Ada tiga kan. Apa yang dia maksud ke orientation tu. Ada tiga ni bermaksud dia ada PX, PY, PZ. Kan tadi yang saya cakap, now you have to imagine that this is actually in 3D version. Ada X, ada Y, ada Z exist. Okay, so PX, PY, PZ. Ada tiga lah. So tiga kat sini. So this is PX, PY, PZ. Okay, macam mana nak draw PX? Simple je. You buat you buat tiga kan? Macam ni kan? Allah. Bila you buat tiga tu Saya tunjuk je lah kat sini ya. Bila you buat tiga tu PX meaning that uh, the balloon or the dumbbell is on the X axis. PX. Kalau PY the balloon is on the Y axis. PZ the balloon is on the Z axis. Okay. Ah, itu bentuk dia kat situ. Sebab tu dia kata uh, ML is actually referring to the orientation. Orientation ni memang lah negative 101 tu orientation ah tapi dia relatekan balik dengan PX, PY, PZ. Okay. Uh, clear ke? Ada satu yang X, ada satu yang Y, ada satu yang Z. Okay. How about D? Uh, lagi kompleks lah. So D eh. N equals to 2 L equals to 0 1 eh, N equals to 3 lah Kalau N equals to 2 tak ada D kan Dia kena 3 ke atas 0, 1, 2 So kita tahu 0 untuk S 1 untuk P ah, Yang ni untuk D kan ah, Kita referring to this one eh So this one ML dia You belajar tadi Negative 2 Negative 1 0 1 2 So total ada 5 kan So this 5 ML is actually referring to dxy, dyz, dxz, dx square minus y square, dz square. 
Okay. Tak apa. Kompleks kan? Mm -hmm. Saya tunjuk dulu eh. Okay. DXY. DXY kat sini gambar dia sebenarnya basically you lukis balloon. Dia four macam four balloon start together. Tadi two balloon sekarang ni four. Uh, dia in between uh, X and Y. Kalau DXY. Ini. Okay. You ada, you you imagine you ada X is X and Y, the in between. Kalau Y, Z, in between Y and Z. So ni Z kan? So ni Y, lepas tu ada satu lagi side dah sini, Y, Z. D, X, Z, in between X and Z. Okay. D, X square minus Y square, ni paling senang lah. Actually di atas, atas plane tu, atas Z axis, X and Y. And then we have also D, Z square, Ah, ini yang paling unik lah. Ada uh, Z square, ada uh, atas Z and then ada uh, ring kat situ. Okay. So, ada soalan? Okay. Soalannya biasa sudah akan tanya. Ni, kena hafal ke cara nak lukis ni? Hmm. As for now, according to your uh, learning outcome for this subtopic, you kena tahu at least up to this. P. S. P. Ha, yang ni saya nak explain sajalah. Sebab if later, kalau you pergi uh, pada F, it's more complicated. Uh, you imagine lah D dah complicated. Kalau you pergi F, uh, bentuk dia ada tujuh. Sebab apa ada tujuh? N equals to four for example. Yang ni S kan? Yang ni P, yang ni D, yang ni F, yang ni N. So L you ada negative 3, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Total ada 7. Ada 7 lah bentuk yang kompleks. Tak macam ni lah, lagi kompleks. Okay, but that one no need to know. Tapi tapi kalau if you are interested to know, you can search for that lah. Dalam buku, international books lah ada. Dalam if you google pun patutnya ada lah. Okay. So cukup lah at least you tahu how to draw until P shape. S, P. Okay. Tapi this one at least you tahu that we know that ML for uh, L equals to 2 ada 5. 5 ni nampak? Ada 5 rumah ni. ni. Okay. Total is 5. Okay. Sekejap. Ni apa eh. <coughs> oh, okay, so uh, this one for example tadi eh, uh, let's say you have value of L0 and also ML U0 kan Sebab so, ML is from 0 to N minus 1 Eh Sarah, 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 Sarah. Eh Yang ni, yang uh, L ni adalah 0 to N minus 1. So, this one is from negative L to positive L. Okay. So, that's why L1, you have 3. L2, you have 5. L3, you have 7. So, type of subject is SPDF. So, number orbit, orbital. Dia nak tambah extra kat sini, number of orbital lah. So, if you have 0, you have 1 lah. If you have P subshell, you have 3. So, this one you have 3. This one you have 5 and ni tadi you have 7. Okay. So an orbital, orbital ini eh tadi, can hold up to 2 electrons. Meaning that kalau dia ada 1, orbital, kalau kita nak buat elektron, kita akan letak 1. Ni macam rumah dia lah. So kalau P, dia ada 3. Kalau dia, dia ada 5. 5. Yang ni ada 7 lah. Setiap orbital, Boleh isi dua elektron. So you boleh imagine kalau ini isi dua elektron so ini akan ada enam, ini akan ada maksimum eh sepuluh, ini akan ada maksimum empat belas. Okay. <coughs> Macam ni example n equals to two, l equals to one. Maknanya ini adalah P, right? <coughs> ML you ada negative 1, 0, 1. So you have 3 orbital right? So maximum number of electron darab 2 lah. So you ada 6. 
Kalau L ke tu 0, M L tu 0, so ia cuma ada satu orbital saja. So maksimum yang you boleh isi is 2 elektron. Okay, therefore for N equals to 2, the total number of orbital are 4. Maksudnya apa? Tadi N equals to 2, you ada L U 0, you ada L U 1 kan? So yang 0 tadi ada satu orbital. Ini kan? Kalau L U 1 tadi ada tiga orbital. So total orbital ada empat lah. Kalau you totalkan semua. So the number of electron is 4 multiplied by 2. So total is 8 electron. Tu cara nak tengok lah. Maksudnya ada soalan suka tanya. How many electrons can fill for n equals to 2? So you kena senaraikan dulu, betul? Bila kira baru you total up kan? <coughs> okay, so far clear? ML? Yes. yes. Okay, so the last one is MS. Okay, N, L, ML, MS. So MS eh. MS is the electron spin. So all electrons have a property, we call it as spin. So basically spin tu kita ada clockwise and anti-clockwise. We have spin up and spin down. Okay. Spin up is MS positive half. Spin down is MS negative half. Jadi kan let's say lah kita ada orbital kan. Satu orbital let's say lah 1S. So maximum boleh masuk tadi dua elektron. So saya tak tahu sekarang maybe boleh diterima arrow macam ni. Dulu kita kena buat half saja, half arrow. Ha, macam ni. Spin up, spin down. Tapi saya tengok dalam slide awak dah guna semua arrow dia macam ni. So maybe kita terima lah. Okay. Sebab saya dah terbiasa guna half macam ni. Half sebab ni half kan? Half. Ini half. Okay. Spin up, spin down, spin up, spin down, spin up, spin down. So ini untuk P. For example 2P. And they equals to 2, dia P. Ha. So maximum untuk P ada 6. So uh, itu maksud MS. So basically uh, ah, inilah MS yang nak membezakan age of the electron. Okay. Within orbital electron must have spin opposite. Opposite meaning that dalam satu orbital at least lah dalam 1S you tak boleh ada spin up, spin up. Cannot. Ah, ni akan kita pergi pada rules nanti. Dia tak boleh. Dia kena ada opposite spin. Satu atas, satu bawah. Macam magnet lah kan. Dia tak boleh sama. <coughs> okay. So inilah dia. Dia punya set of quantum numbers. We have N, L, M, L, M, S. So basically, saya selalu cakap dengan student macam ni. Uh, macam we know that um, macam kita nak identify orang ataupun uh, yelah, ini kita saya nak buat analogi lah eh. Um, for example, um, kita duduk di mana Selangor? Our negeri now, later lah eh, you pergi dengkel kan Selangor. So dekat Selangor ada, you duduk sebenarnya kat dengkel, lebih spesifik. So dekat dengkel, lebih spesifik ni you duduk kat mana? You duduk dekat UITM. Spesifik lagi duduk kat mana? Maybe college or bilik lah kan. Eh. Okay so you buat college apa? Uh, you punya nombor bilik kan dekat college. Okay so selalu saya cakap okay this is N. This is L. ML. Ni MS. Ni yang menentukan okay kedudukan you. You dekat N yang mana? Kita macam sebab macam kita belajar ni kita nak tahu actually um, Uh, kedudukan elektron kan? Okay, according to uh, Hasselberg uncertainty, dia kata susah nak cari kedudukan. And then come up with Schrodinger. Okay, basically this one is from Schrodinger lah. Okay, boleh sebenarnya nak cari based on this um, quantum numbers. So macam kita assume lah, okay. Uh, duduk kat mana selangor? Spesifik lagi kat mana? So dia punya subshell. Dekat dingkil. Oh, spesifik lagi? Uh, you punya rumah tu kat mana? Uh, uh, duduk kat dengkel tu besar. So kat UITM which is the ML. So MS ni, bilik ni basically macam okay. You dah ada dah rumah. Contohlah ni tadi kan dah ada rumah. Spesifik lagi uh, dalam satu UITM tu bilik kan. Uh, let's say lah dua orang maksimum. 
So nak spesifik nak bezakan you dengan kawan you So of course macam elektron satu spin up satu spin down So you imagine that uh, every each of electron although it have the same uh, N, L, ML at least FS dia akan berbeza Okay macam you lah uh, Selangor, ah, semua orang duduk selangor betul tak? Semua orang duduk kat dingkil, semua orang duduk kat UTM Yang membezakan dekat bilik you, you duduk bilik mana? Ada dua orang pula. Ah, you bezakanlah dua orang tu kan? Ah, so samalah dengan elektron. So at least yang ni lah. Kalau dah N, L, M, L dia sama, M, S mesti berbeza. Sama ada satu positif half or satu negatif half. Okay, clear ke? Yeah. Okay, so these are the summary lah. Uh, mungkin yang ni saya rasa you dah clear kat sini. Maybe part of electron kat sini. Okay, sebab kita tahulah setiap orbital dua maksimum. So kita keluarkanlah 2S, 2, 2P, 6. So total 8. Kalau yang ni 3S, 2, 3P, 6, 3D maksimum 10. So untuk maksimum boleh masuk electron 18. Yang ni 2, 6, 10, 14, 32 yang dulu you belajar 2, 8, 8 ke apa tu kan. Ah, sebenarnya actually dia according to the total number of electron lah. Okay. So, so daripada quantum uh, modern punya atomic wave. Actually what's the difference between Bohr's model? Okay, the one that you have learned during your secondary. So the Bohr's model dia cuma ikut macam ni lah. Orbit kan. Shell tetap ada. Sebab shell tu daripada energy, eh, uh, dia compare with the energy level kan. Okay, so tapi macam for n equals to 1 tak ada masalah, masih sama. So they according to Bohr's uh, untuk hydrogen atom kan, Bohr's model. But when n equals to 2, you tak boleh assume dia, dia dekat berada setempat macam ni. So actually dia sebenarnya pecah lagi. Dia ada 2s, dia ada 2p. So bila 3, ah, dia ada 3s, 3p, 3d. Ah, something like that lah. Okay. So inilah perbezaan dia eh. Okay, so nak tengok you faham ke tak? Can you please do this checkpoint? I give you two minutes. Determine the total number of orbital. You can highlight ni. Apa benda ni nak tanya? Orbital. Orbital tu apa? L, ML, MS. Ha. Dia bagi N. Ramai juga ya yang register hari ni. Hari ni last kan. Dah ke?
Dah. Okay. What is the total number of orbital? Eight. 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 Ada jawapan lain? Seven. Seven. Lain? Nine. Nine. Ada jawapan lain? Tak apa, kita collect je dulu. Tak ada? Okay. So now. First of all, you need to know, what is orbital? Okay, kalau you tak ingat kan, you boleh come out dengan You keluarkan je dulu Ini dia punya rules dia kan Dia tak boleh lari, dia ada empat ni je Okay, so orbitals ni actually is referring to ML, right? So when you have N equals to 3 Your L should be 0, 1 2, right? How about your ML? So ML you, yang 0 is 0 So yang 1 is negative 1, 0, 1 2 is negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2 Dia tanya total number of orbital which is ML lah Okay, ini ada 1, yang ni ada 3, yang ni ada 5 What is the total number? 9 Okay? Boleh eh? Clear eh? Sekejap yeah. eh, saya, saya padam yang saya conteng ni Okay? So, uh, n equals to 3, the possible value L are 0, 1, 2 kan? But dia tanya orbital, meaning that dia tanya ML Okay? So, tadilah saya mention kan, 3S ada 1, 3P ada 3, 3D ada 5 So, total is 9 Okay. The very simplest way Selain pada you nak eh, Kalau N saya ada Aduh uh, Kalau N saya ada lima uh, Jenuh lah saya nak senaraikan semua Okay ada cara yang senang You ada orbital kan N equals to 3 You can use formula N square Untuk dapatkan orbital lah uh, Yang dalam general Okay So N equals to 5 Orbital you So you buat n square. Maksudnya 25 orbital in total. Okay. Ha, ini formula lah untuk simplify kan. Okay. Can you please do this checkpoint? Alright. The four sets of quantum numbers. So dia nak set. Tapi dia nak empat saja. For each electron in 3p subshell. Now it is specific 3p. B. Ah. Ah, cuba buat dulu. Fahamkan soalan, cuba buat. By the way, ada iklan sikit. Kalau you all uh, ada tertinggal barang, parents nak hantar, you all kena ke pejabat dan uh, pondok polis bantuan eh. Parents tak boleh masuk. If you ada tiba ada parents nak hantar barang lagi ke apa eh. I think you are considered, uh, you need to quarantine yourself dekat dalam dekat dalam <laughs> campus.
Dah siap ke? Dah, okay. Cuba kita buat sama-sama. <coughs> First of all, you need to understand what is the question asked. Okay, write the four, maknanya dia nak empat, set of quantum numbers. So, what is set of quantum numbers? Bila dia kata set, maksudnya dia mesti ada N, L, M, L, M, S. I to set. To consider as set. Kalau you buat N dengan L saja, ah, itu bukan set. Okay, mesti include MS. For each electron, in 3P subshell. Okay, so now, okay, 3P eh. <coughs> okay, satu lagi eh. Uh, uh, tak apalah, set gila, saya tunjuk eh. So, you, kalau you tak nampak, you keluarkan dulu. Okay, three ni tadi uh, is referring to shell kan. So, maknanya your n is equals to three. Kat situ dah clear. So, okay, tak payah tengok dulu P kalau you confused lah. You keluarkan dulu. When n is equals to three, your L is equals to zero, one, two. Okay, and then your ML is... For this one is zero, for this one is negative one, zero, one For this one is negative two, negative one, zero, one, two Okay, so MS either positive or negative half Okay, you tak boleh tulis macam ni lah Kalau tulis macam ni, uh, kita tak boleh terima jawapan Sebab dia nak set So set ni biasanya kita akan buat dalam bentuk macam mana Kita buat kurungan N, comma, L Comma ML Comma MS Kalau you tak nak buat macam ni You kena buat table Ah, Saya rasa lagi jenuh lah Maksudnya you kena ada N, L, ML, MS Ah, You senaraikan lah Berapa Dia nak empat kan Ah, buat empat Tapi saya lebih prefer macam ni lah So dalam satu kurungan Itu adalah one set Okay So N uh, equals to three Tadi kan you keluarkan we have zero one two, But you have to answer according to the question The question asks 3P You kena ingat balik this L yang determine the shape right Okay So zero is S Okay Zero is S S One is P Two is D right So bila dia kata nak 3P sahaja So you have to use only L equals to 1 Maknanya probability dia dekat ML yang ini sahaja Okay clear So Kalau tak faham boleh interrupt eh So bila kita nak keluarkan dalam bentuk macam ni First First set eh uh, Saya buat dululah in general oh. LL, ML MS. So ada ah uh, siapa punya suara tu? Mesti lupa nak off mic tu. Okay The first set n is n is actually 3. So L sebab you nak P kan. So L U is 1. So dia mesti 1 kat sini. Okay So ML either 3 lah. So let's say lah saya letak negatif 1 dulu. So MS either positive or negative. So positive Half. Okay. Dapat satu set. Set yang kedua. Three. Tiga kan? P tetap satu. So nampak tak? Yang ni sama. Dia tak akan berubah. So we know that this is three P. So and then let's say lah kita nak maintain negative one. Sebab negative one ada lagi satu kan? Negative half. So negative one. But now is negative half. Nampak tak? Three one negative one sama. Tapi at least dia berbeza dekat spin. Magnetic spin eh. And 
3, 1 Masih sama sebab P kan Now after negative 1 is 0 So we have 0 So we can have positive half And then we have 3, 1, 0 Negative half Let's say lah dia nak 4 ha, You bolehlah stop sampai sini Tapi sebenarnya boleh lagi kan You ada 3, 1 Now yang ni pula kan 1, positive half And the last one is 3, 1, 1, negative, half. So basically total dia ada 6. Okay. Tapi dia nak 4 saja. So you pilihlah either for mana satulah antara yang you ada dekat sini. You pilih 4 saja. Okay. Clear clear or not clear? Clear. Okay. Jom, kalau bagi lebih. Lebih. Tak apa yang penting betul. <laughs> tak apalah. Tak, dipotong. Kal kalau salah uh, susah juga nak cakap lah. It depends on that uh, time situation ataupun on that uh, uh, examiner. Kalau let's say uh, total 6. You tak boleh lebih lagi. Kalau lebih maksudnya you dah salah konsep kan. Total 6. You bagi 6. Tapi let's say 2 salah. So, biasanya kita akan ambil lah 4 yang betul. But sometimes, saya boleh cakap eh, sometimes dia akan ambil empat yang teratas. Ha. So that's why untuk soalan-soalan macam ni, kau boleh jawab lah ikut soalan. <laughs> kau dah kata nak empat je, bagi empat lah. Okay? Saya tahu kadang-kadang sudah jawab, eh, tak confident lah jawab lebih lah. So that uh, examiner boleh pilih, pilih kan. Uh, kan saya lagi kalau awak seorang, Tak ada masalah. Masalahnya kalau examiner ni nak menanda sampai berapa ratus uh, answer sheet kan. Uh, bila semua nak suruh pilih, oh jenuh lah. Kan. So biasanya end up bila macam tu dia akan ambil the first yang dia nampak. Uh, so uh, be careful jugalah. Hopefully, of course lah satu lagi doa lah kan. Uh, Apa-apa pun kalau you rasa you buat tu you doa lah kalau dilembutkan hati examiner tu nak marking yang betul sahaja. Okay? Boleh eh? Miss. Yes. Uh, jadinya kalau uh, dia ada <coughs> negative 1, 0 dengan 1. So maksudnya it's tu memang kena ada positive half dengan negative half. Ya. Yeah. Dia Sebab memang takkan jadi tiba-tiba total set tu jadi ganjil ke dia ada 7 ke 5 ke? Ah uh, tak. Uh, uh, boleh. Ah. Uh... Uh, itu uh, kita tak pergi lagi Let's say macam ada specific uh, Sorry Sekejap saya kena padam kot Boleh boleh kalau ganjil tu So kita, kita tak masuk lagi tau sebenarnya Macam ni saya buat 3P 3P maksudnya maximum P sebab uh, ada 3 kan orbital So of course maximum yang boleh masuk 6 Elektron Tapi ikutlah kalau dia nak masuk 1 je Maksudnya dia ganjil lah 1 je Kalau dia masuk empat je contoh. Satu, dua, tiga, empat. Ha, so akan ada yang gedap, akan ada yang ganjil. Elektron. Ha, kita kita tak sampai lagi kat situ. Tapi boleh lah. Dia tak semestinya full. Dia cuma kita boleh cakap maksimum enam. Enam elektron. Which is yang enam tu kena spin up, spin down. Sebab yang ni dia bagi soalan general. Sekejap yang mana tadi. Maaf ni saya pilih pen. Ha, ni, ni. General, 3P saja. But kalau specific, you akan belajar 3P1 Maksudnya 1 elektron 3P2, 2 elektron 3P4 for example, 4 elektron Maximum yang boleh ada 3P6 Sebab 6 je kan? Ha, dia tak boleh ada 3P7 ha, Itu salah Okay, boleh ha, Kita tak kita tak sampai lagi kat situ eh okay, Ini tadi jawapan dia kan? Ha, so you can choose Either mana-mana lah Untuk you isi uh, Sebab dia nak 4 saja kan Okay Okay, check point 5 uh, Now, list the value Of N, L, M, L In the 3D subshell Cuba senaraikan Sama macam tadi, tadi 3P Now is 3D What is the value for N, L, M, L <coughs>
Dah Simple je ni kan Kalau ikut saya dah explain tadi So and dia apa? Tiga Tiga L dia? Tiga Kosong satu dua Kosong okay. satu dua Okay ML Kena sedarakan satu-satu lah Negatif Right Negatif satu Yes, one is negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. Okay, ni ke jawapan dia? Kalau dia jawab ni, saya bagi salah. Kenapa? Sebab dia nak yang three D. Ah, okay. Jadi tak apa, you nak senaraikan untuk awal, boleh. But dia nak three D. So again, this is S, this is P, this is D. So dia nak D je. Okay, so jawapan akhir, you kalau jawapan lah, you kena buat n equals to 3, l u is equals to 2 sahaja. Okay, so that's why daripada l, you akan dapat m l equals to negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Okay, boleh eh, dia nak sampai m l tu kan? So, sekejap saya padam eh. Okay. Okay. So inilah jawapan dia. Okay. Ni eh. Cuma ini saja. Sebab L dan U. D. Uh, dua eh. Uh, D. D. So dia L ikut satu. Kalau you buat jawapan akhir. You biarkan je kosong. Satu kita memang akan bagi salah. Maksudnya you tak faham soalan lah. Sebab dalam ni soalan dah spesifik. Dia nak 3D. Sama macam yang tadi kan. Dia spesifik dia nak 3P. Okay. Kalau you jawab 3P tapi you buat ada S punya value tak boleh lah. Salah eh. Okay. Check point 6. Identify the maximum number of electron that can be occupied in the principal level for N equals to 3. Maximum number of electron ada berapa? Yang boleh masuk untuk N equals to 3. We know that in one orbital, maximum boleh masuk dua. But now we have three. N. Uh -huh. So maksudnya you kena macam patah balik N daripada MS, patah balik jadi ML, patah balik jadi L, patah balik jadi N. Sebab N dia bagi N equals to three. Maximum kat sini boleh masuk dua. How many electrons? 18. 18. Ada jawapan lain? Ini simple je ni. Ikut formula saya tadi paling senang. Tadi formula saya ingat lagi. Number of orbital is n equals to n square. Kita tahu orbitals is yang rumah-rumah tu kan. Ha, ni orbitals kan. Dalam setiap orbital maksimum boleh masuk dua sahaja. So n equals to 2. Multiply by 2 is equal to 18. Okay. Kalau tak nampak. Elah ada macam eh tak boleh lah. Tak ingat lah formula ke apa kan. Okay tak apa. Kena senarai kalau satu-satu. Okay. Sekejap eh. So kita tahu n equal to 3 ada 0. Eh 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 eh. Ada 0, 1, 2 kan So 0, ML tu 0 Ni yang you senarikan salah satu kan 1, negative 1, 0, 1 2, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2 So you total up kan semua ni Ni ada 5, ni ada 3 Ni ada 1 Total orbital ada 9 Tapi setiap orbital boleh masuk 2 Elektron kan so that's why 1 boleh masuk 2 3 boleh masuk 6, 5 boleh masuk 10 So total dia adalah 18 so that's why dalam arti kata lain tadi To get this ML You akan guna formula N square Tapi dapat elektron you darablah dengan 2 So the formula will become 2 times N square Okay Kita tak tunjuk kan kat sini the formula Tapi saya tunjuk dalam lecture lah So that uh, to simplify kan lah Yang penting formula ni jangan hafal Yang Sebenarnya dia akan automatic you memorize Sebab you dah faham konsep Okay 
Kalau hafal benda tu boleh jadi tertukar-tukar nanti. Okay, clear? Medium, medium. Yes. Medium. Yes, yes, Kalau yes. Kalau tak pakai jadual tu boleh. Table ni? Terus pakai formula tu. Ha. Boleh. Maknanya saya tahu awak faham. Table. Saya tahu awak faham lah. Sebab dia nak, biasanya kalau dia kata identify dia maksimum number of electron Maksudnya dia nak jawapan je, 18 Okay, kalau dia kata uh, list down all the possibilities uh, You kena buat table Ataupun yang you buat satu-satu uh, tu lah yang saya tunjuk tu kan uh, Boleh eh, clear eh Okay, so kita take five dulu sekejap Take five sekarang lagi, tinggal lagi 10 minit ni. Eh. Maybe saya habiskan ni je lah. Saya, saya sebenarnya nak habiskan 2.3 ni saja. Boleh eh? Boleh ke kita continue? Boleh. Ah, lepas tu kita terus habiskan je lah eh. Boleh. Okay so uh, for 2.3 uh, nak determine shape tadi. Sebenarnya saya dah tunjuk dah. That's why saya nak uh, laju je kat sini. So shape ni uh, uh, bentuk tadi kan. S, P, D, F. Okay. So Macam mana macam you, kita kata uh, S bentuk dia bulat, sphere P bentuk dia macam dumbbell ataupun infinity Kalau D ni macam empat belon yang diikat ha, Contohlah kan So bentuk-bentuk ni actually dapat daripada electron density Dia tak boleh, dia tak dia tak uh, actually bentuk tu bukan dia dapat daripada Dia imagine, okay dia tetapkan Bentuk dia kena S mesti bulat, no Actually they, they get the uh, this Shape is based on the experimental where uh, density of electron appear on that uh, particular region lah For example, bila dia buat eksperimen untuk for example dekat uh, S punya ni kan Dia tertumpu dekat situ je, dia macam banyak kat situ So macam S, that's why dia nampak bila dia kumpulkan macam bulat Kan, so actually elektron tu berkumpul kat situ saja. Okay so itu that's why uh, the shape is actually is based on the electron density Okay so the, uh, that's why kalau P uh, P kalau bentuk dia macam Eh sorry P ni tadi bentuk dia macam like two balloons tight at the knot tu Maksudnya uh, electron density tu berkumpul kat ujung sini dengan kat ujung sini Maksudnya dia bukan bulat macam ni Kalau dia bulat ni density electron ni untuk S Ni untuk P Dan sama jugalah untuk D. D macam four balloons tadi kan. Okay. So uh, shape ni uh, sebab so S ada dekat semua L kan. Eh sorry ada dekat semua N at least. Uh, so of course uh, L equals to zero mesti ada pada semua N. So macam mana nak bezakan S uh, dia punya shape? Uh, size lah. As N increases, okay. The S orbitals get larger. So 1S kecil, 2S of course lagi besar. 3S lagi lah besar. Sebab dia actually ikut uh, N. Dia punya shell dia kan. Bertambah. Ta tapi bentuk sama. Okay. So PX, PY, PZ pun sama. Dia lagi besar. Uh, lagi N lagi besar. Lagi besar lah bentuk uh, dumbbell dia tu. Okay. Dia dapat tulup lah in shape. Okay. Tadi ingat eh. So P, we have PX, PY, PZ. So PX uh, atas axis X, PY atas Y, PZ atas Z. Ada yang tanya, Miss, Z mesti ke atas, uh, X mesti macam ni, macam ni ke? Tak, sebab benda ni uh, 3D kan, awak terbalik kan, uh, Z dah jadi mungkin belah tepi pula ke, dia tak kisah. As long as you label, contohnya kan, you label lah. Kalau sini Z, sini X, uh, Y ke, sini X ke, Make sure lah kalau kita kata PZ, atau PZ lah. Ha, jangan atas PY pula. Ha, yang penting you faham benda tu eh. Sebab kadang-kadang sekejap lagi ada student tanya, uh, ada, satu, ada nota sini dah jadi Y, Z kat sini. Ha, tak ada masalah. Sebab benda ni 3D. You have to imagine yang benda ni boleh bergerak, berpusing eh. Okay. So L2, ha, ni tadilah yang D tu kan. Ha, macam saya cakap lah sebenarnya up to this lah. You have to know to draw up to L equals 1. But this one, at least untuk you faham uh, Bila uh, N tu lebih, kita ada D kan So ada lima lah bentuk yang you kena ingat DXY, DYZ, DXZ, DX square minus Y square, DZ square Okay, even F pun kita tak tunjuk kat sini kan Kalau you perasan, F tu ada tujuh lah Kalau you macam 
really interested to know what is the shape actually ah you boleh buka uh, google or you, if you have any international chemistry book mesti ada bentuk f tu ada tujuh bentuk okay so now i want you to try this one draw the following orbitals a 2s and 3s 2px 3px 2py 2pz your sketch should show the differences between this orbital in terms of size, shape and orientation. So, you tak boleh draw one by one. Faham tak? 2S you draw lain, 3S you draw lain. Sebab you have to show differences. Walaupun dia tak mention dalam soalan, maknanya you kena draw dalam axis yang sama 2S and 3S then you differentiate. Beza kan? Faham eh maksud saya? Ini, ini saya beritahu ni, ini untuk cara menjawab soalan. Bila you draw asing, walaupun satu kecil, satu besar, kita imagine lah, ah, kita zoom out, dia jadilah besar, kan? Zoom in, zoom out, kan? So, tak boleh lah dia kena dalam satu axis. So, barulah kita boleh differentiate. Ha, cuba draw kejap. A, B, C tu. Okay, kita try eh. Tengok eh, you compare dengan saya punya drawing. Ah, bukan saya punya lah, <laughs> komputer eh. Okay, so for A, X, Y, Z, R. So, je, tadi saya tunjukkan, tak sepertinya Z tu kat atas. So, yang penting you label correctly lah. So, Y, uh, Z, X. So, 2S. Ah, ini pun sebenarnya bagi saya tak cukup label. You have to label. So, yang kecil kat dalam is, of course, 2S lah, right? Um, sebab N dia lagi kecil. Yang ini is 3S. Okay, label lah eh, label. Okay, untuk B, dia nak compare 2PX and 3PX. So, dia atas exist yang sama but then different end. Of course, maksudnya satu kecil, satu besar. So, yang kecil tu adalah 2PX, yang besar adalah 3PX. Okay, dan mesti atas X exist. PX kan? And then C, 2PY, 2PZ. Ah, uh, Now, uh, N dia sama. And the equal but different axis. PY and PZ. So, atas axis Y. So, this is 2P. Y. Atas Z is 2P. Z. Label lah. Yang ni saya terlupa nak label. Make sure you label so that uh, we can uh, mark uh, very easy lah. Okay. Bolehkah? Clear? Uh, yes. Tak. Saya nak tanya yang kalau soalan B tu, mm -hmm. kalau kita dah lukis faksi Z dah apakah? Ah, for this case tak apa sebab Z tu tak pakai. Tapi nak selamat you draw je lah. You tambah lagi satu kat sini kan. Z. Ah. Sebab kita tak ada efek apa-apa for this case kan. Tapi kalau saya better you lukis je. Maksudnya sebelum you draw uh, orbital, you could lukis saksia X, Y, Z. Ha, lepas tu baru ikut jawab soalan. Dia nak PX saja, so mesti atas X. Okay. 
Boleh? Okay. Yang lain ada soalan? Tak ada eh? Okay so with that I stop here Boleh? Okay Dah habis masa bukan? Okay Wait lah eh Okay so with that uh, Sorry ya eh, terlebih 